Hello. Welcome to making onigiri with Whitney. I just wanted to do a disclaimer that the tutorials that I am basing this off of is from JustHungry.com by the author Maki. It is a really comprehensive tutorials on how to make the rice correctly, what kind of rice to get. The whole steps that I go through is totally from her. I'm just making this to make it easier for my family to understand. That's who I'm sending this to. Thanks. What you need is you need a shifter, you need a wire mesh one, or the little rices will fall out. Particularly, you need short rice, not the long grain. This is the kind that I am using because it is very tiny grain. Little tinies. Ah, oh, there it is. This will make for sushi rice and onigiri rice. That's actually correct. You just wave in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing twice the amount because we're feeding three people, um, but you're gonna do one and a half cups. And what you're starting is you're putting it in this and having it over a bowl in that you start to rinse it with a slow stream of cold water. Loves rice and sushi. Hey, he's fish. You're going to be shifting through it and rinsing it off and you see that the like milky colored water is gonna be underneath. What is the difference between sifting and shifting? Shifting and shifting and sifting? Sifting and shifting? I guess sifting you would sifting probably just is like that you're trying like to find something finding in gold it. like <laughs> and this I don't know whichever one it is you're gonna Get it, and that's basically gonna fill up the bowl. You don't want the rice to sit in the milky water. It can a little bit if you have a small bowl, but you don't want it to be reabsorbed into the rice. Once you've gotten it through, you're gonna first dump this water and keep doing that until it's clear. Once the water is clear, at least relatively clear in the bowl from draining, you want to have it set, draining into the bowl, um, unless you have a strainer that has little legs, but I don't know if you do. And you need to let that drain out for like 15 to 30 minutes. I think I'm gonna leave it uh, for 30 minutes. So all that water has drained out a bit. The rice should be feeling super nice now. I let mine dry a lot longer because we had a lot more to dry. It is recommended to let your rice soak for like 30 to probably an hour or more, um, depending on how old your rice is. If it's, if it's a lot older of rice, you should soak it for longer because it's all dried out. Or like we did and we started too late in the day, you can let it soak overnight and then do it in the morning or like uh, for lunch and stuff. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna put it in, we're using an instant pot, um, but you can use whatever rice cooker or whatever that you have. If it's really hot, then you should let it soak in the refrigerator, but we have air conditioning. It's not very hot in here. We're just gonna let it sit in the instant pot. Overnight. Because you're lazy. I'm not lazy. I just, I just started it too late. And we don't want to stay up till midnight making onigiri. <laughs> oh, right. For the one and a half cups of rice, you're going to use one and three fourths cups. But since I'm doing double, I'm doing double that as well. This is for the soaking. And then the next day. All right, it's the next day. And the next step is to not die in the middle of the night from a tornado that landed in your neighborhood. That's important. But the rice has been soaking all night. So that means that it will cook evenly because the moisture has been already kind of sucked up into it. At least that's the theory. If you have a rice cooker, you're just gonna go ahead and do it normally. Whatever you know to work. All right, 
Now that the beautiful rice is done, we're going to get it out and put it in a bowl and get together all your ingredients. Right now what we have is that we got crab sticks, not bacon, although maybe, whatever tickles your fancy. We got some salmon, already pre-cooked, we're not very brave enough to do raw so far from the ocean. And we got cream cheese. We also got avocados. Those are pretty much all the ingredients that we're going to be working with. Just going to get them all together and lay them on separate plates so everyone can easily get to them. Some non-food items that you need is a rice spoon. What is this rice spoon? Rice picker, upper, I don't know. Um, probably a cutting board for like avocado. You definitely need saran wrap for the way that we're going to be making it. Um, you're going to need like uh, little plates if you want to put the ingredients on and make it more nice or, or even bowls. And I'm going to put the rice in this bigger bowl. Also salt is something that we're going to be using on the outside of the onigiri. Well, you need cups. Different size cups for that you're going to put, be putting saran wrap in. Like little cups, you're going to have a smaller onigiri. Stick with smaller ones just because they would get pretty giant um, unintentionally. Gosh, there's so much rice. Oh, it's so nice. I think I did it correctly. It doesn't feel, it doesn't look mushy. Good. But it's still sticky to each other. A little mushy on the bottom. Mm. And then you go to the grocery store because you forgot stuff. Ingredients. Oh, delicious. Oh yes, smell it everybody. Smell, smell. it through the camera. Smell it. <laughs> Ooh, this avocado is great. So now that you got all your ingredients together, what we're basically going to be doing is using cups instead of just your hands to make the onigiri balls because a lot of people have trouble with it being too hot and burning your hands and you have salt on your hands and so that's just kind of a lot more painful. So with the cups, what we're going to start with is that you have saran wrap that you're going to pull it out and poof it down and so it's going to be covering the inside. You're going to spritz that with water and then you're going to spritz it with salt and so now it's like lined with salt so when you put the rice in that you're going to pack it loosely all the way up it's going to get salt on the outside of that flavoring and then you're going to poke a hole through the middle and you're going to use your ingredients like the avocado the salmon or the crab stick and cream cheese and put what you want on the inside and then you put a little bit more on top and then with the saran wrap you pull it out and then you can twist it and shape it into a ball of any shape that you want really. If you're going to take it on a picnic then you can just keep them in the little saran wrapped twisters or you could take them out immediately if you're going to eat them and then we use the seaweed stick to put um, little wraps. There's a lot of different ways to do it but usually it's just like a little strip that's on the bottom and then you can eat it straight from there. I think that's all I need to say. It was absolutely delicious and I have a couple for work tomorrow for my lunch and I am so stuffed. I think we are ready to go into a food coma. And food coma time.